Hi there, I'd like to give you a quick introduction to mastering layers and masking within the GIMP editor. First, back to basics. As someone who really only got into photography during the digital revolution, I thought it might be helpful to go back how to develop prints in the traditional way because this helps to understand and you used to need a lot of chemistry and bits of paper to develop prints and you would have a machine like this which would shine a light through a transparency down onto your photosensitive paper underneath and you'd have a dark room and you need a certain timer now that's where it came from so let's consider having a piece of photosensitive paper because what threw me was I didn't understand masking in traditional terms now you would have a negative which is a transparency and you shine a light through that to the photosensitive paper at the back and then you develop it with chemicals to get your developed print okay that much you probably know now if you add a mask the mask is removing what would have come through from the transparent negative so in this case we've blocked out part of the thing to get that tree so let's go a stage further and we'll use two layers two transparent negatives and then this time we're going to start using a different type of mask where it goes and use masking tape to literally tape things out so that we can only expose part of the image thus giving us two layers and a masked area to give the smiley face a moustache now masks need not be totally black they could be transparent and if you think black through to not black normally we talk in black and white now just that's not accurate but just hang on to that so now with those basic ideas let's look at using the GIMP for editing photos to edit these images now the GIMP stands for the GNU image manipulation program and here it is now the first thing that threw me using layers in the GIMP was that the layer menu is disabled so you can get it up by using control L and there is the layer menu with only one layer and of course the background which we're not so much interested in now there are some other windows that we want some control panels and I'll bring those up from the window menu with the dockable areas and the first of these that I might want is the tool options and the next one would be from the same menu the brush types and that covers round brushes, square brushes etc and again from that windows dockable thing I might want colors now I may want to think about those you might not want all of those windows, you can put them away and bring them back up if you're working on a smaller workspace. And of course you would want your toolbox too. Now that generally comes up by default. So I'm just going to get rid of that and drop a, an image into the GIMP. Unfortunately it's behind one of my windows. So I'll move that out of the way, open a folder, there's a bunch of photos, pick out something we can play with, something nice and simple like some trees on a horizon some hills in the background and it pops into GIMP and then tidy up my desktop a wee bit now what I'm going to do in order to show you these things is I'm going to actually scale the image I'm only scaling the image solely to show you under the bonnet this is so you can see all the layers because I'm going to add a duplicate layer from this menu here by right clicking add duplicate layer we now have two layers 
but you can't see those and that's where the confusion arose for me so I'm going to drag one of the layers off to the side now you would not normally do this you'd leave it in place because you're going to have a problem realigning it at the end but now we see we are off our so-called canvas so I'm going to increase the canvas size and I rescale the canvas to let you see both layers now as I say this is just to look under the bonnet you wouldn't work this way normally you'd leave them stacked over each other now I'm adding a duplicate layer while we're talking and that will go over the initial first layer because that was the one that was selected when I did it so I'll use the drag layer tool to move it off to one side and again it's gone off the edge of our canvas or viewing area so I'll increase the canvas size just simply to let you see all three layers because it causes me such confusion I thought it would help to explain that now here I am using the I button to make those layers visible or not and I'm going to add a layer mask now the choices are to have white, black and several others that are slightly more advanced such as a selection and we'll pick white and I'll explain why in just a moment so you can see that I've added a mask to that middle layer now if I delete that for the time being I want to show you what a black mask would do so we'll create another mask from that layer and I've dragged the menu into the middle because when it says add a layer mask it says add a mask that allows non-destructive editing of the transparency right just bear that in mind now remember black masks hide so if I select a black mask woof it's gone because that black mask has hidden the whole layer now what I'm doing is removing that and I made a beginner's mistake of removing the layer and the mask so I've had to put in a duplicate layer again and this is where I find the whole process can be confusing especially if you've got them stacked one on top of another you get used to it perhaps you might like to practice by having the layers spread out like this so I'm going to add a new white layer to that middle one a new white mask I even get confused talking about it now we go to our brushes and we will select a black brush and we'll pick a shape for that brush from the brush menu so there's one that's got fuzzy edges, a bit of feathering I'm going to increase the size of it to make it easier to see now drawing in black hides because we're making a black mask and you can see that it is hiding that layer in other words we're now seeing through that layer if I draw anywhere else it doesn't work because we haven't activated that layer we're only working on the layer that we've selected if I select another layer and draw on it we're now drawing on the layer not the mask because there's no mask for that top layer and that's why so we'll undo that as I say it causes a bit of confusion but you do get used to it so on that top layer I'll add a layer mask and again make it white select that one and now when we draw on it in black we are using black masking tape to mask in mask out the image okay so we're blacking out in other words we're making the mask hide <laughs> that layer 
so it shows the layer below. Now if I switch back to white, when I draw in white, you can see I'm unhiding. Now that confused me till you think about the fact that you're using masking tape. And if you put masking tape on your negative, then that negative would not be transmitted to the photosensitive paper. And likewise we can go back to the previous layers mask and by using white we're putting the image back in, we're unhiding that layer. Now in practice what we're doing is fiddling with things and we'll adjust the contrast on layer 1. So from the menu there we've managed to get up this dialog box and we can fiddle with the controls. And if you turn the contrast down you get a more kind of pastel effect and maybe up the brightness a wee bit. Now you can also do this from the histogram if you edit these settings as levels and you push that button and it takes you to here and then you can drag your slider up to the bottom of the histogram you can see it's got kind of less contrast and bring the top end down and you'll see the middle one goes too so if you tweak the middle one this is the mid-range contrast and where you settle with that is going to depend on your eye I'm just doing this very quickly and say OK now the idea is we're going to punch holes in the upper images so that we get the best of all possible worlds that we have detail where we want it fuzzy where we want it high contrast where we want it uh, softness where we want it sharpness where we want it so we're then going to black mask the trees on layer 2 so I'm now going to select black and I'll select a little uh, flat kind of oval brush because it makes it's a convenient shape for doing out those trees and you can see there I'm masking out the trees on layer 2 they're now invisible on layer 2 I'll leave the trunks because I'm not so bothered about that but obviously you can do this on every pixel if you want now when I've tried to drag it back into place I'm still selecting the mask so I've moved the mask not the layer now that's a beginner's mistake and this is where when you've got these stacked on top of one another you start to lose the plot a wee bit so I've undone that and I've now selected the layer and I'm moving it and there you can see the trees underneath with the right contrast now I haven't actually done anything to that image but really you want to start messing around with say softness and things in that and perhaps brightness and stuff and you could have with you using three layers we could have the green, dark, bright green foreground there and in the mountains different, trees different, sky different but we will blur layer 3 now it's not a very noticeable blur at this viewing level so we'll select layer 3 and we need to go to filters blur and I'm going to use Gaussian blur and this is what the image looks like so I can just drag it up, click and drag, click and drag, click and drag until I can see the bits I want and you can see the, how fuzzy that is, that's blurred and we say OK so that's that top layer blurred out now I'm still forgetting to select masks instead of layers so I started drawing on the layer. Mistakes confuse beginners if layers are stacked on top of each other which is why I've drawn them out to the side. Now that I've put them back in place I'm still making beginners mistakes. Now I'm black masking out the trees on layer 3 and remember layer 2 was already transparent over the tree so that's roughly finished. You don't want to use much more detail and maybe more layers and keep flattening them as you go and you can always go back and delete layers and delete masks and start again. So we'll blow it up just to have a quick look at it 
and really that green foreground you'd bring up, get the mountains back, work in the sky, work in the trees, four separate areas perhaps. Layers and masks are very useful when applied to specific areas with the following techniques. Here are some complementary techniques for layers and masking. Reduce contrast to produce pastel shades. Increase sharpness to focus on details that you want to draw the eye into the picture. Add softness around subjects or to hide wrinkles on your models if you're taking portraits. Use Gaussian blurring in the background or off subject. Add lightness to key subjects to draw the eye, so to make it look like the sun on a tree for example. Increase saturation to improve the background colour for example, autumn leaves. And reduce saturation to change colour of eyes or lipstick in portraits. Now some more tips. Try painting out the masks with grey, not just black or white, and then you get only partial effects. You can use the lasso to select an area and make a mask from that. You would have seen that in the menus if you rewind. Also try gradient masks to adjust sky detail or reduce uh, UV light and flatten the image at the end to combine all the layers. You can find the GIMP easily enough with any search engine. Just look for the GIMP and there are tutorials there and you can download it from that website at opensource.org. Thanks for watching. I'm Ian Borland. You can see me at happysnappychappy.org.